Okay, we're almost at an end for this review. This is Chapter 5 Review Part 4. And so we should be on page 32. So, we'll be turning over there. I think we are back on our agricultural supply and demand graphs. And so, here we go. Um, if we're going to look at these, we can see that what we've got is an even uh, n same number where you find a dollar fifty. So it asks you, what would the market price be at equilibrium? You've got these numbers that are way off, and they come together at the numbers two fifteen and two fifteen. So if you were to graph it, that is where they actually cross. That would be that two fifteen in prices bought and prices sold. That's where our market clears. And if we go over, we're going to find that that is a dollar fifty. So our price is a dollar fifty. How many bushels would be sold at that point? You've already found it. It's going to be 215. Okay. Now we're going to start moving things around. Draw a new supply and demand curve showing direction of shift. So if it's talking about a shift, that's going to be a change in the whole curve one way or the other. Last week, the Surgeon General of the United States announced that eating corn protects you from the common cold. Well, that would be nice. Maybe it would protect from COVID too. I don't know. But if it could protect you from the common cold, people would want more at each and every price. So what that looks like is you've got your demand curve here and it's going to shift outward at each and every price. You're going to have a new demand curve that is laying down on there like this. You'll have a new demand curve up here. So what happened to price? It went up. What happened to quantity? It also went up. So your new equilibrium price. People will want more at each and every price because that's a shift in the demand curve. Suppose the Surgeon General announced that eating corn will turn the whites of your eyes yellow. Well, most people probably don't want that except for maybe Halloween or something. So your demand curve in this case is going to shift this way because that's going to be people wanting less at each and every price. And so what happens to your overall prices? It goes down. What happens to your quantity? It shrinks back in this way. So you have a lower price and a lower quantity when that happens. Third one there, a strange plant disease ruins a large portion of the nation's crop. Well, it doesn't change demand. It's ruining the crop. That's the suppliers. So here we got our supply curve like this and it's ruining the crop. So that means we're going to get less. So quantity down here is going to shift backwards and our new supply curve is going to be over here like this. Now if we've got a new supply curve like that, then we can see clearly what just happened to the price. Well it went up. And what happened to the quantity? It went down. So this is the trick with these graphs, and this is why you need to understand them, because on the test you can draw these little graphs off to the side for your multiple choice questions, and then you can see which way is it moving, hey, and then I know what the price and the quantity is. I don't have to sit there going, ah, trying to figure out this moves here, that moves there, and this, it, it gets too complicated real fast, all right? So definitely going to be some things on the test. We're moving over to page 33. On page 33, we're looking at things that cause those shifts in supply and demand. So if you remember when we were talking about this chapter, we had uh, determinants of demand over here, number five, things that shift the demand curve. And then we had the determinants of supply, another five things, and that would shift the supply curve. So what this is asking you is can you diagnose which curve are we on, supply or demand? And then which way are you shifting it up or down? All right. For a cost of obtaining oil for making plastics decreases. So what that means is I, I have a certain amount of money that I have to spend for oil to make plastics, but the cost of that goes down. Maybe the price of oil goes down. Now I can make a lot more stuff. So this is the cost of obtaining oil for making, and that's producing. So that's going to be on the supply curve. And sure enough, it's going to shift outward. Because now that the cost is lower, I can make more of these things. It's going to be cheaper. 
the yo-yo fad comes to an end. All right, so that's going to be about demand because a fad is like something people really like and now they don't really like it. So demand is going to decrease and we find, there it is, that's D. Okay. An advertising campaign for basketball shoes is effective. So we tell people, I want to be like Mike, I want to be like Mike, and everyone goes, yeah, I do, and they're going to actually buy those things. And so our demand curve is going to shift upward and to the right, and that's our shift right there. All right. Um, a personal income tax reduces available income for purchasing stereos, TVs, and other major appliances. So for letter D there, uh, the government's not going to take as much money in taxes, and so that leaves more money for the people. And what are people going to do with extra money? They're going to spend it. Yeah, they're not going to save it. Okay, so what is that going to do? That's going to increase demand, and again, it's going up and out there, and that would be C. So for both of those, uh, we're going to have the letter C, because demand is increasing up government subsidy you should remember that and if you found subsidy on determinants of supply there would be in the fourth one uh, subsidy helps American carpet manufacturers and if you remember that video what I told you is when there's a subsidy you always get more the supply curve is gonna shift out you always get more with subsidies because they're paying you to make more stuff uh, and that's going to be uh, a and new robot lowers production cost for automobiles. So again, that's just like the first one. Uh, the cost of inputs is going to be where we had that for supply. So it's going to be A, and the robots are going to make it easier to make automobiles, so it's going to shift outward that way. You'll notice we never use the letter B here. Um, don't be fooled that you have to use every one every time. could just not, not even be there. All right. Uh, going down to the bottom, um, what you're going to find here at the bottom is that every one of these are elastic. I mean, they ask you for reasons, like a six-pack of cola. Is it a necessity or it's a luxury? Is there many available substitutes for cola? Yeah, there's lots. Milk, juice, water. It's probably all better for you. Um, inexpensive? Yeah. Easy to delay purchase? Yeah, really easy. You can go your whole life without eating a six-pack of soda. soda. And so, for that reason, it's elastic. For the same reasons, a pizza is elastic. And for the same reasons, cosmetic surgery is elastic. And a 10-speed bicycle is elastic. And a surfer shirt is... They're all the same. The only one that I would take um, issue with is uh, air conditioning in Arizona. My daughter's currently in Arizona for college, and she said it was 106 yesterday, and this is like, you know, the end of September in the Dallas. And she said the low, I think, was 92 at 6 in the morning. She went outside to exercise real early, and it was 92 degrees. So, I mean, do you need air conditioning in the Sun Belt? Well, there have been people groups that live there without it, but, hmm, in modern America, I just don't see it. So that one might actually be in elastic, where people just think, I gotta have this okay and the last part is the crossword and the crossword is just sort of for fun uh, it's basically a vocabulary list um, I think you can get all of them the one that gives the kids the most problem is this one right here because it starts with a D and six uh, down I think it is yeah six down should be uh, desire so uh, what economists call the willingness to buy something without the ability to buy it. You just you just desire it. You're just wishing. You know, you, like, I want a Lamborghini. Well, that's that's nice, Mr. Hate, but you're not going to have it. You're not able to buy it. You're just wishing. So, uh, yeah. What economists call the eagerness to buy without the ability to pay. So that's the one that usually trips people up in its desire. If you have any other questions for these, ask me in class. I'll see you then.